Hello, everybody. Hope that you are hearing me well. Welcome to our 26th annual general meeting. And it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. We have a huge crowd, a huge merry crowd. Okay, so now we are going to call the AGM to order. Jenny Lebron, our chair of the board, will start the agenda with all of us. Thanks, Monica. Um, so I officially call the AGM to order. Um, we will go through the first uh, few motions. So I will need somebody to approve the agenda for this annual general meeting. Marie, is there any way that I can see more people? One second for technical. Cecilia, who's taking, are you taking minutes or we're recording? I am. Okay. I am. Okay. Perfect. Christina. Sorry, I was coming in a little bit late today. Okay, perfect. So we are moving on to approval of the minutes for the 2020 2021 um, fiscal year. Can I get a mover and a seconder? Uh, Donald moves. Can I get a seconder? Cam? Thank you. Okay. Um, can I, so uh, all of the board members that are existing in the current um, fiscal year have all decided to stay and, and put their name forward. So we would have uh, an acclamation of all of the board of directors. So could I get a motion to move uh, the slate of board of directors to be the same as it was last year? Uh, Marie Claire and Cecilia. Thank you. I know you're all muted. <laughs> Okay, so moving on uh, to presentation of um, the annual reports. The first one is the um, the chair um, message from the chair. That's me. Um, so I want to welcome everybody. Um, this year I had the sad duty, but also the great honor to become the interim chair of the board of directors for Near North Palliative Care Network due to the sudden passing of our pre predecessor, Darren Renault. We will miss him and we will miss his advocacy and passion for Near North Palliative Care. He was a gentle soul, but fought, a hard, fought hard for his causes of which Near North Palliative Care was one of them. He will be greatly missed. For Darren, we will proudly continue to provide the community and surrounding area with visiting hospice services. I've been involved with Near North Palliative Care for over five years in one capacity or another, but most recently as vice chair. As part of the executive team, I've been heavily involved in what has been going on within the organization. The transition between vice chair and chair has been smooth and uneventful. As your new chair, also involved in the financial and reporting aspects of Near North Palliative Care, I see that the main factor to, is to secure the continued good services of Near North Palliative Care to our community is to guarantee sustainable increased revenue that will allow us to hire at least two additional FTEs, which are full-time equivalents. The number of clients served by Near North Palliative Care grew ninefold in the last six years without uh, any increase to funding. The growing trend will not stop here. We will see increasing need of palliative care and bereavement support services in our community as the baby boomers age and reach their end of life. We know as a fact uh, that most of us would like to live our last years and days at home, supported by family, friends, and professional health care. Near North Palliative Care is the only provider, um, is the only provider volunteer visiting hospice in Nipissing and East Prairie Sound. Our region is becoming a retirement pool with an influx of retired couples moving north. The need for our services will grow steadily for the next 30 years. This requires that we find new sources of revenue. Please help us spread the word. Near North Palliative Care needs strong sponsors, bigger donations, legacies, and additional funding. 
Above all, we need the kindness, loyalty, and devoted service of an increasing number of volunteers like you, the beating heart of our organization. Thank you for all that you do, and please invite a friend to join us this year. Together, we will provide our community with the best volunteer visiting hospice services our loved ones need and deserve. Thank you. Okay, moving on. We will now move to the uh, executive director's message and report. So Monica and Lane, you're up. So well, we to know you working team. Dear all, this has been quite a time since the pandemic started almost two years ago. The way I can describe this year to you is this, intense. Looking back today, I invite you to see through my eyes and heart what we have experienced during this year in the life of an NPCN in terms of intense losses, challenges, and accomplishments. Robert, if you could put my, my text. Uh, first of all, uh, let's start by the next picture. Uh, yeah, okay, the picture. That one? Yeah, just... yeah. Okay, so. So fast change does not give you time to process losses calmly. You must keep going for love of the cause that we all believe in, that we are committed to the cause of near North Palliative Care Network. At NNPCN, we are still grieving the losses uh, we had this year. Our chair, Darren Renault, our board director, Bridget Brown, and one of our pioneers, Donna Giro, among others. We have them in our hearts as we keep pushing forward through this big adventure. That's what they would have wished. Okay, thank you, Robert. So I would like to invite Nikki Poulain, uh, the of Darren Renault, to receive our symbolic hug right now before I continue with my report. So Nikki, this is for Darren. Thank you. In terms of ex intense experiences, all of us shared the need to adapt to a year of social isolation, homeschooling to our children, working remotely from home, economic hardship, and multiple losses of friends and families to COVID. This has been quite a ride to all of us, filled with many ups and downs of intense emotions, right? Uh, the major challenge we will have to face together in the next two years or so will be the economic recovery from the pandemic in a period that has been called stagflation. Uh, in other words, it will be economic stagnation with inflation. The price of life staples is already starting to rise, such as food, clothing, and medication. This means that we will need to live through a period of economic austerity. We will be tightening the belts in our domestic and organizational budgets. At an NPCN, this reflected on the intense challenges that we had to face for the last two years and still must face in the next two years or so. We had two poor years in terms of donations and fundraiser and doubled the number of clients served since last year in the middle of the transition from the former to the next generation of volunteers. We had to spend a good part of the surplus of our funds, which had, we had saved with a lot of work and sacrifice for the last six years of my term as your executive director. We are now in a small red because no major donations or fundraising came in for the last two years and the expenses to serve more clients kept growing. This has been intense and I feel grateful for the fact that we did have a small sum put away for a rainy day and we fared relatively well while so many businesses and the nonprofits around us were closing their doors. 
On top of these intense experiences, we are in the very middle of the transition between the past and the next generation of volunteers. It has been quite a bittersweet time to say farewell to so many volunteers who are returning and deserve their years of peaceful leisure after a whole life of service to others, such as our dear sister Winifred McLaughlin, uh, John Wattier, Linda Minor, Rose and Michael Jolly, Linda Gay, Sister Mary Reynolds, Marcel Rochon, Jane Bra June Brayshaw, Antoinette Girard, and so many others. Uh, at the same time, we are saying hello to many new faces, such as placement students who fall in love for what we do and stick around as our volunteers, even if their reality is to juggle among study two or three part-time or temporary jobs as they can take care of young children and aging family. Despite the many voices of doom predicting the end of volunteerism in our generation, uh, the complete halt of volunteerism during the pandemic and the retirement and death of a significant number of our pioneer vo volunteers, we just went slightly down from 147 volunteers in 2018-19 to 128 active volunteers in 2021, a good number of these being brand new to an NPCN. Just a little remark now, I am going to skip part of the report to make it shorter as we read, and I will just highlight a few very important accomplishments that we did. So uh, I want to share with you this intense hope intense pride in the achievements we had in the middle of our all-out war against COVID and lack of resources. We renewed our accreditation with HPCO, and we got accredited not only to our visiting hospice services, but also to our bereavement services. This is a huge accomplishment. Among other things, we heard from the HPCO accreditation team that an NPCN is a flagship organization, small but mighty. And uh, you can see on your screen our new CEO of accredited uh, organization 2021-2024. Okay, Robert, you can go to the next photograph. There. So, as you know, I am a very bad girl, and I got into all kinds of trouble with the international criminals of the world in the United Nations organization. Uh, we did that to take me and our palliative care to the next level. And uh, this is far more than we can have time now to share with you. So I am adding the links to my message to you today, and you will receive that at home on any mail uh, after the AGM so that you can enjoy all that we have been living in terms of adventures. So I just want to highlight uh, this photograph here is our delegation. Uh, I was representing near North Palliative Care as the International Association of Hospice Palliative Care Advocacy Focal Point for Canada at the 74th World Health Assembly from the World Health Organization. So you see little me down there in the last uh, picture there together with the whole Geneva HQ. So now, Robert, I'm going to uh, jump the next paragraphs, and I will go to Jack Kupferman there. This is a very exciting uh, initiative. During the summer, uh, the placement students from the School of Nursing of Nipsing University helped create a video representing North Bay and area for the international video series honoring nursing home lives lost. And to my complete surprise, Jack Kupferman, who is the president of the Great Panthers of New York City, uh, wrote to me last week telling me that our video produced here in North Bay will be presented in November at the 15th Global Conference on Aging 
uh, held by the International Federation of Aging, and I will be together with Jack Pupferman presenting the video made in North Bay to honor the lives we lost in COVID here in Northern Canada. So now I am going to the uh, internal uh, accomplishments. I would like to start telling you that due to the immense need of underserved bereavement children and youth uh, in our region, I also got involved with the founding steering committee of the Canadian Alliance for Grieving Children and Youth. Inside neonatal palliative care, we have been investing in the development of our own children's grief services for the last three years and you will have the joy of seeing our local children supported by grief sessions with us very soon. Uh, and with a grant of the Children's Grief Foundation, we have been able to send grief packages to local children aged seven to 12. We are also backing in-person grief sessions and palliative care visits, still with 100% safety measures to protect clients and volunteers. There we are. We are investing in the growth of more services to the First Nations, Métis, and Francophone communities by developing specific training and services to them. And we are right now uh, pushing for our French language designation with the help of our new director uh, in Brulé. Our staff and a few volunteers are investing in learning French to serve our Francophone clients better. Uh, to extend our services to as many people as possible. Francine Leclerc, our events coordinator, with a grant from OTF, served thousands of isolated seniors with, with weekly online workshops that you can find in our new YouTube channel. We also organized and had the best palliative care winter conference of past years, and this was, believe me, an intense truckload of work. For the next Winter Conference 2022, we are bringing an international celebrity in grief and bereavement, Dr. Alan Wolfelt, uh, and also Dr. Christine Pan. She is a passionate MD for palliative care and the chair of the NOSM uh, Education Committee. And also, we are going to bring a Canadian authority in palliative care metrics and quality improvement, Brian Tramontini, the founder of Stratin. Our wonderful office team is right now almost winning the battle of taking near out palliative care network to the paperless age. Most of our information is now handled by Info Anywhere and the Stratin databases, making Near North more agile and better equipped to expand our services to this new brave, uh, brave new world of virtual health brought by the pandemic. With the help of a generous grant of the OTF Resilient Communities Grant, we are now also developing our own an NPCN online training platform. This will be fabulous. This will help an NPCN to expand our volunteer base to the limits of our catchment area with a new model of online training for bereavement and palliative care volunteers. Okay, now this is a very special initiative, Nick Poulin. Darren Renault's widow is spearheaded the publishing of Wise Tales and our fundraising campaign to support the printing of the book was successful. Please consider buying copies of Wise Tales as your Christmas gift of choice this year to help an NPCN. And to put the cherry on top, we also left our mark at North Bay Waterfront with a grant from North Bay and Area Community Foundation in partnership with the North Bay Heritage Gardeners by creating the new pollinators flower bed at the Kiwanis bench shell area. So another photograph there. So there is so much more that we could share about the wealth of services that near North is now, but our mission impossible for the years to come will be to guarantee sustainable revenue that will allow us to hire at least four full-time employees instead of two, and to invest in quality improvement 
while serving an exponentially growing number of clients. In simple words, we need to find more money in a time of economic stagflation. This promises to be intense as well. So how did I experience protecting your north and pushing our mission forward during these intense times? There you are. That's how I felt. Damage report. And I also confess that the Indiana Jones soundtrack played a few times in my mind. So uh, uh, for the next page, Robert, the next photograph. It seems like yesterday when in 2017, we celebrated together uh, the 30th anniversary of NNPCN with a nice dinner before our AGM here at the Mother House. So in 2022, next year, my hope is to celebrate our 35th anniversary together, hopefully with a gala dinner again with all of us together. And to be back at the North Bay waterfront for our 13th annual butterfly release 2022, also broadcast live from the park. And these are two photographs from past uh, butterfly release at the waterfront. I want to conclude by saying that nothing of that would have happened without the loyal support of each of you, our wonderful volunteers, our fabulous office team, our new chair, Jane Lebon, our board executive, Michael Lowe, Scott Taylor, and Nadine Jason, who had my back all the while, and the proficient firm support of our Ontario Health leadership, from Brian Titter, the new CEO of Ontario North, to our close managers, Leanne Valliquette and Megan Wake. Please consider this report your victory and your doing. Receive my respect and gratitude. Your loyalty will reflect in services to the vulnerable sector of our community for many years to come. As said in my message to you last year, today I come before our community to renew our commitment as good stewards of public money. In hard times of change, me or not palliative care network chooses to take the high road. Come rain or come shine, we are here for you. Steady she goes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Monica. Um, we're now moving on to the treasurer's report, which I will uh, give. I'm going to do the stats first, actually. And then... Okay, sorry. That's okay. That is okay. Lane's doing stats. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> yep. Hello, everybody. Um, so just to go over some of the stat, uh, stats over the past year. Um, so with the COVID pandemic gaining full momentum at the beginning of last fiscal year, the effects can be seen in some of our numbers. Um, however, with the perseverance, adaptability, and determination of, of the volunteers, you guys, many people throughout the region were still greatly impacted by our services. As to be expected, uh, with the rolling lockdowns that took place throughout the year, face-to-face -face sessions were significantly lower this year, having 180 take place. But to have that many face-to-face -face visits during the pandemic is really remarkable. Response to lockdowns and to maintain optimum safety, phone calls and video conferencing were implemented. Over 5,500 phone and video calls were carried out, which is an astounding number. Individuals served increased greatly this past year to 1,390, many of whom were isolated seniors who received friendly phone calls from many of you. Also included in this number were those who attended the Palliative Care Winter Conference, which was a highly praised event. We had 183 referrals last year, which was much less than the year prior. Similarly, the elderly referral rate was also lower. This had much to do with the impacts of the pandemic and the recent dismantling of the local health integration networks, or known as the LIN. Since the transformation of the LINs into home and community care support services, the office has been in good communication with, with managers and care coordinators, and we are now in, in seeing an increase in referrals. Uh, our group session skyrocketed to 545 this past year, having 3,093 participants in total. Francine's project was a big reason for this increase, 
And also uh, a reason was due to uh, the weekly meetings NNPCN staff facilitate with our placement students. This reciprocal relationship allowed a number of post-secondary students to gain hands-on experience while contributing to the cause of NNPCN in a number of ways. The work the students put into NNPCN are included in this year's volunteer hours statistic, which reached to well over 16,000 hours. Of course, this also includes all the great work you have all done with clients. Finally, NMPCN ended the year with 128 active volunteers. And now I'll pass it on to the chair, Jenny LeBlanc, for the treasurer's report. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole set of um, audited financial statements. I think uh, people will get bored with that. So I'll just touch on some of the highlights. Um, I think the most important part is saying that we did um, uh, get a, a clean audit opinion. Uh, that The auditors agreed that our financial statements presented fairly. So that is always a good thing. So this first page that's up on your screen is the statement of financial position. Um, you can see that there's an increase in revenues um, over last year to 265 or, or an increase in assets um, to 265,000. Most of that is cash sitting in the bank account, which is from all of the grants that we got for um, the interns and students and, and uh, extra COVID money. Um, so moving on to the next page, that is the one that most people want to talk about. Where did we end up at the end of the fiscal year? Well, we did end up about $10,000 in the hole, but there, that is okay. Um, we had a major decrease in our fundraising because of COVID, um, but we did make up a little bit of that in um, grants and COVID money coming in. Um, we do want to make sure when we're um, spending and, and doing our budgets through the year that we, we absolutely make sure that we spend all of the provincial funding, which is 192,000. Um, and it's okay for us to be in a deficit because we have about 108,000 sitting off to the side um, in savings. So leftover money that we didn't need from previous fund year, raising years. So we uh, are definitely in a good financial position. If anybody wants the full set of financial statements, um, just call the office or email uh, Lane or Monica and they can send them to you. So that's it for the treasurer's report. Okay, moving on. We are moving to uh, certificates of uh, volunteer hours for Allison. Hello everyone, and thank you for attending tonight's 26th AGM for NMPCN. My name is Allison Wilkes, I'm the volunteer coordinator here, and it gives me great pleasure to be kicking off the awards section of tonight's event. We have many awards to be presented tonight, and the first category is for volunteers with the most hours. So this is for volunteers with over 90 hours. And the first recipient is Lana Richardson with 173 hours. Uh, Lana has been with NMPCN for longer than our database has recorded. <laughs> she officially received her 10-year pin two years ago, but we're pretty sure that she, it's been at least 30 years. Lana is a retired social worker, the T Surgeon Falls team lead, both a palliative care and bereavement volunteer, and a member of the board. Lana is bubbly, caring, and a real team player. Congratulations, and thank you, Lana. Next, we have Kathy Foisey with 140 hours. Kathy is also a retired social worker and has been with us for five years in the role of bereavement facilitator. She has served over 170 bereavement clients in her volunteer career and is our North Bay bereavement lead. Thank you, Kathy. Next, we have Norma Jean Nielsen with 101 hours. Uh, Norma Jean is relatively new to NMPCN, having joined the team in March, 2020. She has served mostly bereavement clients, but has also supported palliative care clients. Norma Jean, who also goes by NJ, has a PhD in education, is an avid reader and gardener, 
And thank you, Norma Jean. Next, we have Lynn Perrier with 92 hours. Uh, Lynn is also new to NMPCN. Uh, she joined us in January 2019, and she's a bereavement volunteer. She is soft-spoken, gentle, and her clients have nothing but good things to say about her. Thank you and congratulations, Lynn. And we're gonna have Lane up here to start the awards for years of service. Okay, we will start off with the five year uh, pin awardees. First off is Jesse Lee Sugar. Jesse Lee is a bereavement volunteer in North Bay. She's caring and eager to learn. And we're so glad she stayed on with NMPCN these past five years while pursuing her degree in social work. Congratulations and thank you, Jesse Lee. It's Joanne St. Denis. Joanne is also a bereavement volunteer. She works full time as a speech language pathologist and has a background in nursing. Despite a busy schedule, Joanne still finds time to support her clients. Thank you, congratulations, Joanne. Kathy Fossey. Thank you, Kathy. Your contribution to NNPCN is really invaluable. We hope you stick around for another 20 years. Kelly Boycott. Kelly is a palliative care volunteer who lives in North Bay with his family. Kelly is one of the kindest, gentlest souls you'll ever meet. Congratulations, Kelly, and thank you. Wayne Duquette. Wayne retired from NNPCN in November 2020, but completed his five years of service as of October 2020. While volunteering, Wayne spent full-time hours in the office, manning the phone, helping with IT, or whatever else needed to be done. We miss you back in the office, Wayne, and thank you for all your help. We hope you're enjoying your second retirement. <laughs> and Allison. Allison has been the volunteer coordinator at NPCN for four years. She first started out as a volunteer, occasionally helping in the office until she assumed her current position. Allison has a background in nursing and enjoys living in the country with her family. I'm sure all of you can attest to Allison's considerate and friendly demeanor. Congratulations and thank you, Allison. Linda Bishop. Linda has been a member of the board for six years, but we missed her five-year anniversary last year. Linda has a background in nursing and lives with her family in the Madwa area. She is an accomplished RPN, having worked in long-term care and hospital settings for over 25 years. Thank you and congratulations, Linda. And Ryland Steele. Ryland joined the NMPCN team six years ago while studying psychology at Nipissing. He left North Bay to pursue a higher education and is currently a change management specialist for the Southeast Lind and the Psychometrics Director for NMPCN. Thank you, Ryland. Now for the 10-year uh, pin awardees, we have Cecilia Seidler. Cecilia is a bereavement volunteer with experience in hospice administration. Cecilia has run many bereavement groups at NMPCN, and she is still an active volunteer and is currently providing uh, support to clients. Cecilia has always been a volunteer that NNPCN can count on. Thank you, congratulations, Cecilia. And Monica, you all know our executive director. Monica became involved with Hospice Palliative Care and Bereavement Education and Training in Canada in 2009. She has done so much for NNPCN, including, but by no means limited to, developing the grief and bereavement training and services for NNPCN and training our new teams of bereavement and grief volunteers in several locations of, of Ontario. She's one of the authors of the HPCO online training program for hospice volunteers. She's often up early to join meetings for various international committees and always making time for grief clients, palliative clients, staff and volunteers. She has done so much and is so dedicated to NMPCN. We hope to be giving out your 25 year pin in the future. Thank you, Monica. <laughs> Yeah, I'll hand it back to Allison. Okay, so we don't have any 15 year um, awardees this year, but we do have 20 and 25 year uh, recipients. So the first of the 20 year recipients is Sister Jeanette Duguay. Uh, Sister Jeanette serves the Mattawa area and currently sees clients at Algonquin Nursing Home. She is a very kind, gentle soul who brings a sense of calm and peacefulness whenever with a client. Thank you and congratulations, Sister Jeanette. Linda Miner is the other 20-year PIN recipient. Uh, she's also part of the Madawa team. 
She has a wonderful sense of humor and over the years has been a dedicated and loyal volunteer who is always willing to be there for someone. Unfortunately, Linda has recently retired from NNPCN due to some health challenges. We wish you all the best, Linda, and thank you for your two decades of service. Congratulations. Next, we have the 25-year uh, PIN recipients, and the first of which is Marie Ganella. Marie is part of the Sturgeon Falls team. She's been an active volunteer for many years, but has recently stepped away to care for her husband. She has a wonderful sense of humor, is compassionate, and dedicated to the cause of hospice palliative care. Thank you, Marie. Next, we have Bev Sharon. Uh, many of you know Bev. For those who don't, Bev is a wonderful person, compassionate, and very good at organizing. She sat on the board from 1995 to 2010 and has been involved with NMPCN in various capacities over the past 25 years. She is a retired ICU dialysis nurse and great with families, caregivers, clients, and volunteers. Bev has stepped back from NMPCN in the past few years due to some health challenges, but is still involved behind the scenes. Thank you, Bev, for your many and ongoing contributions to NNPCN. Congratulations. And the last of our 25-year PIN recipients is Rose Ransom. Uh, Rose was the lead of the Sturgeon Falls team, having recently stepped away due to some health challenges. Over the past 25 years, Rose has been extremely active at NNPCN. She was always available to do what needed to be done and was part of a team who never refused an assignment. When visiting his client, Rose would bring a loaf of homemade bread. Thank you for your contribution to NNPCN and your continued loyalty. Congratulations. So there are three awards uh, left this evening. Uh, the first of which is the Lil Barton Briggs Award. Um, this award is named after Lil Barton Briggs, who was one of the original Powassan Palliative Care team members. Lil was very dedicated to NNPCN and often spent overnights and traveled through all kinds of weather to see clients. <clears throat> because she always went the extra mile, an award was created in her name for volunteers who demonstrate outstanding commitment to NMPCN. This year's recipient is Lana Richardson. Lana always goes the extra mile, literally. Living in Mark's Day, Lana travels to Sturgeon Falls, Werner, and even Doki's First Nation to see clients. She wears a number of hats at NMPCN and is also an advanced care plan trainer with HPCO. Lana is Francophone and often supports Francophone clients. Thank you, Lana. We are so grateful to have you at NMPCN. Congratulations, this award is well-deserved. Next, we have the June Callwood uh, Award. Uh, this award was created in 1994 by uh, HPCO's predecessor, HAO, or Hospice Association of Ontario. It is named in honor of the late June Callwood, a longtime hospice advocate, community activist, author, and recipient of the Order of Canada. June was a journalist, broadcaster, and humanitarian whose name became synonymous with integrity, talent, and passion for social justice. This year's recipient is Linda Miner. Um, when we called Linda back in April to let her know that she was receiving this award, it made her day. She joined the Mattawa team 20 years ago after seeing an ad in the newspaper. She recognized that there was a lot of bad in the world and thought that if she could do something good, it will cancel out. Throughout the past two decades of volunteering, she has enjoyed the connection with clients the most, often leaving clients' home, homes feeling like a million bucks because an unlikely connection was formed. Consistent, humble, with a beautiful attitude, we thank you, Linda, for your years of service and your loyalty and devotion to the your suffering. Congratulations and thank you, Linda. <clears throat> we will miss you and wish you all the best in health. And the last award for the evening is the Nancy McCubbin Award. And I'm gonna ask Carol Owens uh, to present this award. Uh, Carol is a previous board director, volunteer and sister of the late Nancy McCubbin. So Carol, you can unmute yourself or somebody will have to unmute you. Oh, I just saw her. There she is. Okay. 
I see your lips moving, girl. And now you're laughing. <laughs> Can't hear you though. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Please take the floor. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, thank you for welcoming me and asking me to do this. My my sister Nancy was one of the uh, pioneers of, of palliative care uh, three decades ago, and we lost her really suddenly after she had some surgery when she was only 53. So this award is named after her. Um, I just want to show you instead of my fancy face here, I will show you Nancy in the black shirt and Joan Burnett. Joan Burnett was the original um, uh, fire starter, shall I say, of Near North Palliative Care. And they had an awful lot of fun, but as you can see, 30 years later, we're still at it. So uh, I'd also like to show you one more because this year I would like to say that Nancy's best buddy, Donna Giroux, who we lost this year, who was also a pioneer member of Near North Palliative Care. So I wanna mention her as well, because she would be very happy to know that the visits have gone up astronomically and everything is going so well for you guys. So that's it. I would just like to uh, congratulate uh, recipients and thank you. So um, the recipient for the Nancy McCubbin Award is the same recipient as the June Callwood Award. Um, it's sort of our local version. Um, so Linda Miner, you um, have won that award as well. And you will receive your um, certificate and plaque and gift in the mail next week. I've lost my clicking ability. Um, that's okay, because next we have Lane McDermott with the, um, we have Lane for the next portion. Okay, hello again, everybody. Um, just going to make a few special recognitions, um, more specifically to some of the volunteer teams within NPCN. Um, just going to wait to get up the PowerPoint here. Okay, we'll start off with the satellite teams. Thank you uh, to Lana Richardson, head in West Nipissing, to Cam Ducharme in Madwa, and to Reverend Fraser Williamson and Bev Beavis in Almaguan. Thank you to the bingo team, June Kenny, uh, Estella Pauke, who are gonna be retiring in December, and also to Nicole McDowell, who retired in June. Um, thank you very much for all your years of dedication. Um, your great work has helped at Near North a great deal. And we also thank uh, the new bingo volunteer, Ellen Faulkner. Um, we'd like to thank all those who help out at the Butterfly Release event. Um, behind the scenes, uh, Scott Taylor uh, to note. And all other events. Um, thank you all to your, your help in the success of all our events that we put on. We'd like to thank our garden team for the, putting the work in um, with our new garden. It looks great. Um, there's Lyle Tanike, Pat Winder Singh Situ, Garwinder Carr, Cherise Gregory, Courtney Day, Renee LaCourcier, and Kathleen Palmieri. I'd like to thank those who have helped out writing grants this year, Michaela Noe and Kayla Strood. Uh, a big thanks to Kellyanne Smith for ongoing coordination of the NNPCN newsletter and to Helen, Heather Wallingford, who authors many of the articles in the newsletter, and also to those who helped out with the Seniors Connected newsletter. Uh, this went out this past year, Laura Joel and Michaela Noe. I would like to thank all of those um, member agencies of the Palliative Care Interdisciplinary Education Committee and for all their great services they provide to our communities. Uh, I'd like to thank those who helped out with the Pen Pal Initiative. Uh, there's Nancy Stevens, Ethan Hooten, and Charmaine Holland. Again, thanks to all our placement students. Uh, they've uh, there's so many of them, and they've done a lot of a lot of them have really contributed a great deal to Near North, and we thank you all. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Nadine. Um, she 
did a great contribution to Near North. Um, she's new, uh, newly appointed the secretary of the board. Uh, she worked extensively with Monica over the past two years, uh, reviewing and revising NPCN's policies and procedures. Uh, we thank you very much, Nadine, for all your work. And then uh, now just to uh, mention some of the staff we haven't uh, talked about yet. We have Elena Klingspawn, Palliative Services Intern, Christina Beauparlant, Bereavement Services Intern, uh, Robert Pankew, IT Technician, and Jackie Cottrell, Website and Social Media Coordinator. Uh, and at this point, I'd like to thank uh, Francine and say farewell to her. Um, she's been a part of the NMPCN team since August of 2020 and her contract is now uh, soon ending and she fortunately found a new job so um as she will stay on as a volunteer which is awesome uh francine's done a great uh done a great job with her project and she's helped so many uh seniors in our region and uh you should really feel really proud for what you've accomplished good luck to you in your new job and we appreciate all you've done thanks francine and now just to uh, thanks to some of the partners that have helped um, with the continuous growth and improved services of Near North. We have our accounting reporting teams, Mark Brown, our accountant, Jeffrey Brown at Blue Sky Bingo, Dean DeCare and Ash, uh, Alicia Miller from BDO, and our chair, Jay LeBlanc and Felicia Tompkins for the internal reporting. I'd like to thank all this, the sisters of St. Joseph of Sault Ste. Marie, Sister uh, Bonnie McLaughlin, Sister Winifred McLaughlin, sorry, Sister Bonnie McClellan, Sister Winifred McLaughlin, Sister Josie McKechnie, and Sister Cecily Hewitt. And for all the sisters for their constant kindness and hospitality to our volunteers, staff, and clients. We'd also like a thanks to send a thanks to the constant support and collaboration of the staff um, of the Mother Post. They are always great in helping us out with all our activities. I'd like to say thanks to Anthony Rhoda. He is a constant and loyal support of the cause of palliative care in our community. I'd like to thank all those who work at Home Community Care for their great collaboration with us. I uh, thank Michelle Cropo, chair of the local end of life table and all, our, all the other colleagues there at uh, Home Community Care. And finally at Ontario Health for their funding and constant guidance from their officers especially Brian Teeter, Rhonda Ferguson, Crystal LaBelle, Constantino D'Souza, Leanne Valquette, Megan Wake. With that, I'll send it off to Christina for the raffle prize. I get to do the fun parts. <laughs> so I have everybody's name here and my little name holder here. Uh, this year's door prize was generously donated by the Georgian Bay Cruise Company. It's a fabulous sunset dinner cruise for two on the Chief Commander in North Bay within the 2022 cruise season. And without further ado, the big winner is Susan Srigley. Congratulations, Susan. We hope you have a wonderful time. Well deserved. Before passing things along, I'd like to mention that I'll be posting a link within our chat uh, in a couple of minutes and asking you to please fill out our 2021 AGM survey. Now I'll hand it over to Jenny LeBlanc for closing remarks. Thank you, Christina. Um, so I'll keep it brief. I just wanna thank everybody for attending our AGM this year. Um, as you can see, I think that everybody is doing a wonderful job and we're going to continue doing what we do best. So again, thanks again for attending the AGM. So thank you very much, everybody. You see three minutes to seven, we are ending earlier and you are now invited to enjoy a marvelous concert with Roadhouse. Uh, that was part of Francine's grant this year. I love you all. I'm so happy to he have you here today. Please stay well. And we are going for more, more adventure to come. Thank you. Bye-bye.